whenever I'm looking at a camera, uh, especially when I'm you know recording a video and so forth, the camera for me is like looking into the eyes of a person. And so I visually think about, imagine I'm doing this presentation and I'm talking to one person. It's actually not even a huge audience. It's like, I'm talking to one person and right now I'm looking at the camera, like directly down the middle of the lens and I'm talking to that one person. And you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the difficulties that you're going through. I'm thinking about the challenges that you're facing. I'm thinking about happening to, you know, get enough money to go to the next level in your business or hiring your first staff member. I'm thinking about the difficulties of that, that you're facing. And when I'm speaking, even if I'm not men mentioning those things, I'm thinking about who you are as a person. Welcome to the Think Media Podcast. My name is Heather Torres. I'm the host of this show. And here we want to help you grow your YouTube influence and then turn that YouTube influence into a high income and high impact online business. And if you're brand new to this podcast, we release a new episode every single Tuesday. And for those over on the YouTube channel, we have bonus shows just for you. So make sure you are subscribed wherever you like to consume your podcast on. And if you are commuting in the car, walking the dog, doing the dishes, I want to thank you for putting us in your ears and being a part uh, and letting us be a part of your journey here as you're growing your YouTube influence. Now, today we get to have a special guest on the show. And today's episode is brought to you by thinkinfusionselling.com. You'll learn more about that during today's episode, but it's all about storytelling. This is one of the topics that I love so much because as a content creator, we wanna be sharing our stories because when you share your stories, people get to know, like, and trust you. They become a part of what you're doing. They see what impact you're trying to make in the world or what impact you're not trying to make in the world when you start sharing your signature story. So we have our special guest, Colin Boyd, on the podcast today, and you're gonna learn all about how to figure out what your story is. I remember when I started uh, sharing content on YouTube, I didn't really know what parts to share and you know how deep I wanted to go in sharing my personal journey um, as an entrepreneur and as a content creator. But Colin's gonna help you figure out what your personal story is, what your signature story is. You're also gonna learn why it's important to be sharing this story as you're creating content. And you're gonna learn the three secret ingredients to your signature story. I cannot wait for us to get into today's featured content. So let's jump into today's conversation. Welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. I'm fired up for today's episode with Colin Boyd, and we're gonna be talking about the three secrets for your signature story and how that will help you connect with your audience more. You can apply this to videos, webinars, your courses, your content. And Colin is really a communications expert and he's gonna help us get more confident on camera. If you ever have the nerves before recording, he's gonna talk about how to calm those. He's got all kinds of strategies that we can apply. But if you're just meeting Colin, he's a husband and a dad. He's been running his own business for over eight years in coaching, training, keynote speaking around the world for large corporations and organizations. And he really helps experts, speakers, and consultants to increase their influence and leverage their passion into a successful business. Colin and his wife, Sarah, are personal friends. And we've actually been a part of a kind of a business group together for uh, over a year now. And so uh, his content has personally helped me. In fact, our YouTube domination framework is a tension framework that I actually learned from Colin. And that framework has not only served our community and served you, the Think Media Podcast, but we've uh, published that in a few different videos that's now responsible for hundreds of thousands of views. So I encourage you to buckle your seatbelt for this entire podcast because there's going to be a lot of juicy content that you can apply to grow your YouTube channel, your business, and your brand online. But with that, Colin, welcome to the podcast. Hey, great to be here, Sean. Um, I'm fired up to dive into um, specifically why is a signature story important? What if you feel like you don't have a story? What are the three secret ingredients? But if people are just meeting you, what is your story in a nutshell? Mm. So for me, uh, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I know for me, when I first started uh, my coaching business, uh, I, I didn't I didn't have any clients. Like, so I didn't, you know, like I had this dream, this desire to make a difference in the world. And, you know, I had that tension internally of, 
uh, I've, I've basically, you know, there's, there's no one to serve, no one to help. And so what happened was for me personally, I'm sitting in front of my, my old laptop with my mouse pad and all that sort of stuff. I'm looking at my calendar, no clients on, I get a, I get a phone call from, uh, on my landline, if you remember those, uh, and I pick it up and it's a buddy and he goes, Hey man, I've got a presentation coming up and it's free. So you, you, you know, not getting paid for it. Uh, but I think it might be good. And he go, and he also says to me, he said, I got given it from another person and that they didn't want to do it. And, and then he gave it to me and he goes, and I just don't want to do it. And he goes, do you reckon you want to do it? And so it's a real hot lead, right? Like super hot lead. Um, no one wants it. So I, I end up working my myself up to that place of going, okay, I'm going to do it. Like this was my first like ever presentation, you could say. And I remember the night of it, I headed into it and it was literally a dark and stormy night. I'm so nervous. My hands are sweating. The event organizer runs up to me and he's like, Colin, like you wouldn't believe this. This is the biggest event we've ever held. We've got like record numbers. He said, there's 137 people here and we're just so excited to hear your presentation. Now, now for me, this is bad news because <laughs> it just felt like I was just going to look like an idiot in front of more people. And so what happened was I got up, I, I presented uh, and at the end, I made an offer. Now, what I didn't realize was was the offer I made was actually an irresistible offer, which we can talk about today as well. And and what happened was out of the 137 people, 125 of them gave me their personal details. I followed up, did a whole bunch of coaching because at the time I was selling coaching. And uh, I ended up signing a full deck of coaching clients. So I went from zero coaching clients. It was kind of like a half coaching client uh, up to, it was like 12, 13 full-time coaching clients. And then HP called me four days later and said, Hey, would you come and speak at our global conference? And I ended up speaking for HP for over 10 years. And so what was crazy was that, that literally in one presentation, and obviously that was a live presentation. And now that can be amplified onto virtual stages and virtual events and challenges and all that sort of stuff now. But at the time, that one presentation literally took me from kind of zero to hero in my own mind of going, you know, I had nothing in my business and it launched my business in one experience. And so the revelation I had back then was just the power of speaking and the power of using a vehicle. Um, and obviously this is a stage in itself right now. And for me, just to be clear, a stage for me is any visual and verbal platform where you're connecting with a leveraged audience. So for me, when I my people don't come to me to learn how to do a podcast, right? Even though you can use a lot of the strategies. For me, a, a stage is any sort of visual and verbal experience that you have with a leveraged, leveraged audience. And so the big idea was this for me, was that like you, literally in one presentation, you can, you can have a breakthrough in your business. That's amazing. And um, I'm excited in part two, kind of as we get towards the end of this, uh, you know, to talk about how we can power up our challenges, our webinars. Of course, everyone listening here is interested in video um, mm. as well as really this being a video podcast. And I think video podcasting is really the future as well. YouTube is investing in probably going to have some podcast integration, kind of a syndication, maybe even a you know RSS feed or, or whatever. I think that's all going to happen on the platform as well. But I want to dive into just one nuance and I would love to blow it up more into like how this can lead to us making more money selling around our offers, uh, but specifically this idea of a signature story. Um, one of the challenges on YouTube is that you can create content that's also intent-based or search-based, and people might come by, you might get some views, you might even generate some income through AdSense or affiliate marketing, but if you don't really connect with your audience, they also might just pass through. But one of the ways we can really connect with an audience is, is by telling a story. However, I'm sure there's kind of objections like, does somebody really care if I'm just teaching something to hear my life's story for three hours, starting at my date of birth, you know, <laughs> totally. um, and, and there's, it's, it's also kind of a buzzword I've learned people like, Oh man, you, you gotta just tell your story. Like, you know, you just really got to tap into the power of story. Like, you know, <laughs> the people who get it, did you hear that guy? He's a story expert. What do yeah. you even mean? Like, what are we talking <laughs> about? Like, I mean, it's, it is kind of, he wrote a book on storytelling. You're like, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, what, like, am, am I a fiction author now? Like what's, you know, so I'm just kind of curious specifically for thought leaders, experts, speakers, personal brands, the listeners of this very video podcast, 
why is sharing our story important as it pertains to basically public speaking, this visual communication format? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that when you said, you know, this is a video podcast, for me, this is a stage. So it, it has those elements in there. And so like, first off, like that's awesome. Um, story. Your story is fascinating. First of all, no one cares about your story other than maybe your mom, right? Your mom probably cares, but but no one really cares about your story. And so when you say, you know, why would someone want to listen to your story? You know, they probably don't want to. And that's the big distinction I want to bring out here is that when you tell your story, you have to design it so that when the audience hears it, yeah, they hear they hear your story, but they actually hear their story. And so what that means is that when you're telling your story, you need to bring out the vulnerability, the difficulty, the challenge, the internal resistance, the internal desires, the journey that you went on in a way where the audience goes, this is like they, the audience will go, you know what, maybe I haven't been through that exact experience, but they'll go, I've got those desires. I've got those challenges. I've got, I want to make a difference in my world. And so when you tell your story, your story shouldn't be your origin story. So you shouldn't start with, you know, I was born in, for me, I was actually born in Canada. I was born in Canada in 1981 and I moved to Australia when I was two and I grew up on the beaches and, you know, and my mom, you know, showed me this, like, like no one cares about that story, right? The story you have to tell is the story that actually imparts the most important belief that your audience needs to believe in order to commit to themselves in the area that you can help them with. Now, I just said a lot there. Um, and this is going to come back to one of the three secrets that we're going to get to. Um, but But to clarify, no one cares about your story. And so when you think about, oh, I don't want to tell my story, don't worry about that. Because when you design it right, your story is actually their story. And so that's one of the first frames I think you need to view your story through. I love it. And and specifically, you know, we've had some other great guests on the podcast. Uh, Brock Johnson, Shaleen Johnson have, have taught a lot on storytelling. And Brock Johnson, for example, has a book where he tries to capture a lot of stories that could be illustrations for uh, to make a certain point. And in some cases, it might just be a funny story mm -hmm. that illustrates one thing. There might be uh, a particular story from your life that could make a connection that might illustrate one point of your offer. Um, and, and so as we build out depth and if you will, curriculum and content in our own personal brands, we eventually might have multiple stories, but here we're talking about a signature story. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you mean specifically by that term? Yeah. Signature story? I need to define this. So uh, I know we kind of frame this as your signature story, but I have a specific take on it. And so I don't usually call it like initially I call it signature story because that's what people connect with and understand with. But what I'm talking about is what's called a conversion story. And a convert the difference between a signature story and a conversion story is that a signature story is a lot of the time designed to talk about who you are, where you came from, your journey into where you got there. And it's kind of like an origin experience where a conversion story in the frame of a signature story, a conversion story is actually the story that when and when someone asks you to share your story, you don't go back to your origin and where you grew up and all that sort of stuff. You actually tell the experience that amplifies and showcases the most important belief that the audience must have in order for the audience to commit in the area that you can help them with. So if we go back to, you know, when Sean asked me right at the start, he said, hey, you know, tell me your story. Tell me your signature story. I didn't say, you know, what? I grew up in Australia on the beaches and we we moved to America four years ago and uh, I started my coaching business. Like I didn't tell that story, right? I told a story of where I was sitting, struggling with my business and didn't know where to go, didn't know what to do. And I had an opportunity come up that was like given to me and then it literally changed my life and that was a speaking opportunity. Now, I help people to speak more effectively on live and virtual stages like video, et cetera, right? 
So that is the core area that I help them with. So whenever someone asks me to tell me, tell them my story, I don't tell the whole story. I tell them the conversion story. And so that's what we're talking about today. And I think every expert, YouTube expert, video expert, like there needs to be some sort of conversion story, not just your origin story, because that's the thing that's going to move the audience towards the offer. And that's what I'm obsessed with is helping your content move the audience towards your offer, not just the audience to go like, oh, that's a cool story. Powerful. And and as you were opening, you were talking about uh, things that I'm sure we can all relate to in the Think Media Podcast community. I'm feeling fear. The numbers of attendees are going up and now I'm nervous. And, <laughs> and listening to this podcast right now, people want to go live. But if too many people show up, oh, oh wait, who are these people? Self-doubt. Palms are sweaty, knees weak, mom's spaghetti. I mean, <laughs> you know, this stuff's happy. Like, like we can relate to that. And yeah. and and you're now also you've built a successful business. You you've got these successful products, but it's also people can't relate to your success until they hear your struggle. Mm. And I could see myself in that same story. Maybe confident to speak on stage now, but terrified in the mm. past. Or it depends on what stage it is. And I'm still yeah. experiencing the butterflies. Or, and so very powerful. And 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 the transformation because for any of us. Most of us are helping people. We on, on, The goal is to what problem do you solve and who do you help? Who do you help and what problem do you help them solve on our YouTube channel, especially in that more education angle and niche. And we're helping our avatar. We're helping our ideal viewer is usually ourself a couple of years ago. Mm, and a couple of exactly. years ago, we're stuck. We're struggling. We're, we're nervous. We're maybe getting some results and we get into that emotion. So that I like this. We're really talking about the three secret ingredients of a conversion story. Yeah. So let's jump into those. What's the first ingredient? Yeah. So the first ingredient is uh, is challenge, and you you touched on that before, where you were talking about you know the the difficulty, the sweaty palms, the struggling to get clients, uh, because no one cares how good you are until they know that you were like them at some point, and so. The the first part of any sort of conversion story is you you have to start in a place of difficulty and challenge. Now, sometimes people come to me and say, Colin, but I've kind of been natural at this. Like they might say, I might have, I've always had a natural skill. And that might may not be you, but if you've got that thought, I still want to encourage you that this pro there probably was a skill development journey and some self-doubt or difficulty that you had or some difficult moments that you can bring out. And so the first part of, of, a, of a conversion story, you know, your signature story, but you get it now, right? The conversion story is that the audience has to connect with you. They have to answer that question of, they have to say, oh my gosh, I'm like you. Now it's not, do you look like them? Have you gone through the same experience? The way you do this is you actually do it from an internal perspective. You do it from, and I usually amplify the tension that you are experiencing internally during the journey of difficulty and challenge in your in your story, and so that's the desires that you had, the impact you wanted to make, but the tension, the fears, the doubts, the anxiety, all that sort of stuff. And so, the first piece is the is the challenge. And so, Sean, I don't know if you want to talk to that at all um, for you before we get into the second piece. Well, one hundred percent, and I think what a large majority of our community connects to um, in my story was going back to 2009. And my story is pretty dramatic. And I want to touch on this uh, in, in a second as somebody might ask, well, I don't know if my story is that good or I don't know if my story is that dramatic. But when I go back to 2009, my wife almost dies. The housing bubble crashed. Um, we were both working multiple jobs, but I'm working in ministry and she's actually the bigger breadwinner, but now her health's under attack. And not only that, our church falls apart, senior leaders, steal some money. And it's at massive challenge, crisis, fear, $600,000 in debt, that a new fire is lit in my heart to find a way to provide for my family. And at that same time, uh, I'm in the uh, hospital by my wife's side for six days. I actually, not only am I praying, God, what am I going to do? And I feel like, man, I really got to step up, man up as a leader. I'm now looking for answers. And and I go to Barnes & Noble across the street from the hospital. There's a success magazine and there's a CD in the middle of the magazine. 
And it's um, the key interview back when there were CDs was Gary Vaynerchuk talking about his new book, book Crush It. Why now is the time to cash in on your passion. And um, I read that while I'm in the hospital and I start thinking, okay, I've already been doing videos since 2003. I started a channel for my church uh, on YouTube. I've been studying affiliate marketing and all this stuff. And I'm getting a little bit of clarity like, man, I got to crush it. Now, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I wander for the next multiple years. Um, but that was really that genesis moment that that set, up, set us on the trajectory to where we are today. And that story comes up a lot or is woven into our various you know, content. Um, and so uh, that's that's that challenge piece, right? And and yeah. YouTube was also the very vehicle to transport us uh, to financial freedom, as well as growing our business and initially even helping other clients and, and being able to sell freelance services around YouTube and all the different things. So, am I on the right track with with Dude, challenge? I love, that. I love that. And 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 what can be cool? Imagine like describing the moment of where you're sitting next to your wife holding her hand and you're looking at her she's she's helpless she's sick and and what that feeling was like internally mm -hmm. as a husband as a provider as a however you want to see that and that tension like what could be cool is and I love the visuals of that picking up that magazine so like spending that time in the visuals and, and picturing those things and you actually like go back and relive that experience because when you feel it, when you relive it, the audience, I don't care whether they're on video or they're on a live stage, it doesn't matter. The audience instantly feels the energetic change in you when when you relive that experience. And so, you know, you, their audience may not have had that experience. They may not have had, you know, they may not go to church. They may, they may not have had, a, you know, that experience like that or their wife go through something like that. But what they have experienced is the hardship, that the feeling that comes out. And so all of a sudden you go from being the YouTube guru to being, oh my gosh, Sean's just like me. And, and so all of a sudden they're going to start to go, wow, now, now I'm on this journey with him and maybe I could do something like him as well. And so a couple of questions on that to drill a little deeper on this challenge. The first is I want to encourage listeners, even though I would say a year after this happened, three years after this happened, five years after this happened. I didn't even really perceive the power of story in my own life. It wasn't until learning some of these things. And even I think trauma too, sometimes disconnects you. You like it's, you have to kind of go back and mine out some of those details. And I love the advice that I know we're all benefiting from right now, getting in there, feeling it, going back there personally. So even though I've been crafting this story as well, I think that's one of the keys crafting it. Mm -hmm kind of thinking about, okay, there's even things I remember, or sometimes people on the fake media team, I'll talk about when I really get into it, like, you know, we rushed first to the Everett Community Hospital, she got stabilized, and then I followed the ambulance, you know, lights spinning from Everett to Seattle and our Honda Civic down, you know, questioning <laughs> on the good. drive. And so, so, and I, and I, and I had to like, piece by piece, kind of repiece the story together, like it had all happened. But you could just get up and it, like you said, you could say it dry, not really go there. There'd be levels to crafting the mm -hmm. story. But here's my question before we get into the next two tips. M maybe a lot of listeners are thinking, I don't, I mean, that one's, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we could have planned that. That's a pretty, <laughs> dr it's dramatic. It it yeah. makes for, you know, if, if it was made right into a film, it'd be pretty interesting or rather a a 30 minute, 60 minute special or something, or an hour, I suppose, you know, whatever, like, and they just go, okay, well, I'm talking about gardening, you know, on YouTube. What is, I don't, you know, I didn't have much. What would you encourage someone who's doubting that they have a conversion story or are having trouble seeing that for themselves? Yeah. Well, I mean, in the context of, of challenge that we're talking about right now, for me, um, all you just need to do is just find a moment in your life of of real difficulty, a moment in your life that kind of that woke you up and said, "I need to make a decision. I need to change the way that I'm living. I need to take more responsibility. I need to take more risk." Any sort of experience, and that could have been a relation, like a broken relationship. That could have been just a moment when you were sitting in a hotel room and just, you know, down on your luck and and feeling sorry for yourself and and just feeling stuck. 
you know, like I think everyone has had one of those moments. And if you haven't, then you're probably not human. And so uh, one of the challenges is having the courage to look at the reality and go like, when was some of the most difficult moments of my life? Now, they may or may not be a part of your conversion story, but I think it's really powerful to do that exercise to start there because usually it's some of those moments that were the catalyst of where you made the decision to make a change in your life. So for you, Sean, you know, you went through that moment, but obviously, you know, there may or may not have been like an absolute like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to go all in on YouTube. Like it probably was an evolutionary journey. But when you tell your conversion story, I would... I would be clear on that that there was an area of your life that you knew had huge potential and it was video and you were using the platform of YouTube and 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 so you do want to clearly link it but a lot of the times during the actual experience like you, it's not as clear but obviously if you have to link what your offer is and what you help people with with your signature story and that is part of the crafting crafting of the signature story and so um, and this is going to make more sense as we get into step two and three of what I'm talking about here. Let's go there. What's step number two? <laughs> so, the, yeah. So, like I said, the first one's challenge. The, the second core piece is, um, is credibility. And so what most people think is that their signature story is about proving to the audience that they are good at what they do. And so the, what will tend to happen is they will focus on, you know, what their results are or what their accolades are or something like that. But what, what's beautiful here in this balance of what you, if you watch this happen is when you start in challenge and vulnerability, the audience goes, you're like me. I get you. And, and you've been through the difficulty. It's like we're on the same page. And then you talk about that decision moment, that journey that you went on. And sure, there might have been some struggle and so forth, all the way through to your breakthrough moment. And remember, the breakthrough moment is built around, we're about to get into it, the third element in a second. But the breakthrough moment or the breakthrough experience, the credibility is more about showing that the vehicle that you chose, which is the thing that you help people with, enabled you to create the credibility and the results that you always wanted. So in other words, it's the it's the victory. And so the the two the first two elements, I kind of see it like a Venn diagram, right? Like there's three, three, you know, circles. And so the first circle is challenge and vulnerability. The second circle is credibility and the victory that you experience. Now obviously there's a journey that you can go into. Now you don't have to go into all the details but you might find one moment of where you had a breakthrough in that journey towards getting the credibility. And what's fascinating is that if you can connect with your audience through the challenge, the vulnerability, and then take them on a bit of a journey of the results that you've got, and you actually don't even have to spend too much time on your credibility. And it could be literally just like, you know, we've got this many YouTube, but at the end, we've got this many YouTube followers, we've got this many so-and-so, we've, you know, we've achieved this in our business and we have a desire and a passion to create this. Like people will be on board with you because remember the goal of your signature story is to not prove that you are good enough to teach them. That will happen naturally um, as you actually share your content. Now, obviously part of it is, but the purpose of your signature store, signature story, when it becomes a conversion story is actually related to the third element. And the third element is that the whole signature story is aligned with your core idea or your core premise and your core premise is essentially the one idea that you want your audience to have a revelation of so that they can see that there's a pathway to achieving what they want in their life. And so for you, Sean, I'm just take, going to take a guess. Like the core premise could be that using video through the vehicle of a vehicle of YouTube, you may or may not even include YouTube, like video is like the core one. And then YouTube is the mechanism it's like using video is the fastest, most effective way to reach your audience and create the clients that you've always wanted. Like, I'm just making this up, right? So is it something like that, your core premise, your core idea? 100%. And I think, yeah, video would be the more macro, but certainly yeah. over what we've done um, in the last decade, it would be YouTube, but it would also be kind of be like our proprietary process, which mm. would be search-based or intent-based 
content on YouTube connected to, if you go really deep affiliate marketing, but basically search-based content, because it was what we really believe now over 10,000 people in our video ranking Academy community, that is a unique approach to YouTube as well. And it was the approach as I started to realize back then YouTube is a search engine. I started to connect that to even specific videos related to affiliate marketing, YouTube being free, being able to be an affiliate being free. And if I started, I, I, I had, I had the light bulb tested the theory and it became the very vehicle that helped us climb out of debt, climb, you know, start paying medical bills, start doing yeah. all these different things. And so, uh, absolutely. You could say, you could summarize it as video. You could summarize it as YouTube, but even as we tap into, if you, I suppose a unique selling position, mm -hmm. you know, other there's different approaches to YouTube, yeah. but our proprietary process or our, our angle on YouTube itself is like, Hey, if you use it in this particular way and you have the right profitable niche that it, that people are actually looking for and that there's an actual audience for that now, now you could create a vehicle to make an extra grand a month, an extra five grand a month, the next, you know, make it a six figure business, scale it into a seven figure media empire. Um, and so absolutely 100%. So that's, started, the, that's the flow on. And so for me, what I want to get with your, with your listeners is that is, which, which I know you've done, which is boiling it down to that really simple statement of like that, you know, maybe it's that through YouTube, YouTube search-based practices is the most effective way to get X, whatever they want, right? For me, it is it is crafting an irresistible presentation using infusion selling is the most effective way to get a breakthrough in your business fast. And so my core premise is all around one presentation. That might be a webinar that you design and then you scale that up, or it might be a challenge you design, you scale that up. And so my core premise is around speaking, right? Your core premise is around YouTube and both of them are right. What's cool about core premises is that there's not like, oh, if one, if you've got one core premise then the other core premise isn't right. No, your job as a content creator is to help your audience in the experience that they have, whether it be on a podcast or whether it be on a, on a speaking engagement or a webinar is to build the beliefs that they need around the core premise that you help them with to show them that, hey, if this is the ve if this is the outcome that you want and you resonate with me and the vehicle that I do it with, then I'm the guy, I'm the girl who can help you achieve that. Super, super strong. And, and 100% listening to this, there's, uh, especially if you will, in the personal development or YouTube expert influencer space, um, there's a lot of core pre premises needed. You know, people ask yeah. what's the key to success and it's really not a key. It's actually a combination, like a combination lock. Um, certainly there's different ingredients <laughs> you want to add in there. It could, I mean, mastering communication, crafting your signature story, learning infusion selling, as you're saying, uh, and, and a lot of our community sometimes finds themselves, there's kind of two big groups. There's, there's the group that's a small business owner. Um, they already have an offer. There's the course creators, um, and they're already, you know, crushing it and, or wanting to crush it. They've created those things and they're wanting to use YouTube as a vehicle to promote and amplify what they're already doing. And then there's kind of about the other group who sort of their first tiptoe into things was like, I want to do YouTube, like in and of itself. Like they kind of say, you know, they did a survey of like 13 to 15 year olds or whatever. And like the majority of them more than wanting to be an astronaut, want to be a YouTuber. There's an awareness that the creator economy is a real thing in and of itself, whether monetization, Patreon, brand deals. But once you get into that, we would then begin to unpack. That's why we want to introduce our community to people like you, because we really believe eventually you need to create something to sell. Eventually you should package what you know in an online course. Eventually you need to create an irresistible offer. Eventually, even as you can tap into a lot of income streams like affiliate marketing and AdSense, you don't want to be dependent on YouTube for your revenue or Amazon affiliate program or whatever for your revenue, you need to create something of your own and actually eventually sell that, which would mean we need to also learn how to sell. So to your point, and as you know, you collaborate with all kinds of people, a lot of core premises, but I like this because once you really distill down your brand, mm. you got it. Would you, would you say you need to niche down? I mean, we, we know you now as the infusion selling guy, you're specifically going to help us master s public speaking on video in challenges and stages physically yeah. as that returns in as well 
Uh, but unto selling an offer, not just to speak mm. to entertain, but actually yeah. to build a business. Um, and and then I'm the YouTube guy. And, and so for the listeners that maybe maybe there's a lot of light bulbs going on, but there's maybe also even some like, OK, shoot, I, I don't have anything to sell or I'm not even sure what my core premise is. How do, how do you kind of zero in on niching down and figuring out your core premise? Or maybe we have a lot of real estate agents or financial professionals. So they kind of maybe know what it is. They, they know what their business is and they know they want clients, but they're like, I don't know. I mean, how do I get a core premise that's unique in the market? Yeah. So uh, I think first of all, you need to start with just working out what you think your core premise is. And so for me, you know, I, there are multiple versions of my core premise, but one of the clearest ones is, is I'll say to my audience that, that you are one irresistible presentation away from the breakthrough you've been looking for in your business. And then I'll, you know, obviously I'll go into all the evidence and all the different reasons why that's true or, and so forth. But one way to describe it, and this doesn't work for everyone, um, but it could work for you. It's like you were one YouTube channel away from creating the business and the dreams you've always desired. Right. Or it could be, so that's one version is like you are one X away from getting the result that you desired. Another way to do it is, is simply to just go, you say what the vehicle is, what you help people with. Now, when I say the vehicle, the vehicle is either the unique methodology or it's just the platform that you use. So if you're a real estate agent, it could literally be a certain type of property. So it could be like positive cash flow property is the most effective way to scale your your income and create the security you've always wanted in your in your life right and so that's not super unique but at least it's clear and so i think what you know before we even get into like being unique and all unique selling mechanisms and so forth the first thing people need to do is they just need to get clear on what the vehicle is that they help people with and that doesn't have to be unique because think about it like this, is that as long as the audience can clearly see that that vehicle will help them and they're in the vicinity of your, your content and they're experiencing it, then most probably you're going to be the person that they go to to help to create the result that you help them with, right? Now, obviously, the 2.0 version of that is having some unique methodologies. So for me, I teach people to sell from a stage, from a virtual stage or a live stage. A unique methodology that I have is called infusion selling. And, and in the context of today, so this makes sense, um, infusion selling is essentially the ability to be able to speak and sell at the same time. So most people try to like speak, they do content, and then they whack a sell on the end, and it just feels super awkward. What I teach is you speak and sell at the same time. So they come together, right? And signature story is one of the nine infusion selling strategies. So we're going, I'm literally giving you one of them today, infusion selling, uh, the signature story process, right? And so the context of this coming back to core premise is I think for your listeners is to first of all, to just go, what's a clear statement of the vehicle I help them with, that might be property investment, that might be YouTube, that might be content creation, whatever it is, and link that to the result that the audience wants. So start with that, and then we then you can eventually get into unique selling propositions and methodologies and so forth. Beautiful. Well, in just a second, we're going to get into a couple practical tips too for like calming our nerves, for getting on camera, be more confident uh, on camera. But I want to unpack. Um, uh, some of the other things inside of this and Colin and I spoke before I was curious if he had anything if you want to go deeper with him specifically in signature story as well as the other areas he teaches related to infusion selling and he actually just put together an offer uh, that will help you if you're interested you can check it out of course in the show notes or in our uh, YouTube description or just go to thinkinfusionselling.com and uh, I love Colin's stuff again uh, by taking his methodologies, his frameworks, and applying them to webinars or speeches I've done, or specifically YouTube videos, I mentioned just one framework that he shared with me has led to hundreds of thousands of views and really helped bring clarity to our community. Um, and so 
Uh, Colin, what are some of the other, I mean, we can't get into them, but what are the, uh, a few of the other nine total infusion mm -hmm. selling strategies? Yeah, totally. So, um, so to go, before we go through this, the reason why you would want to learn infusion selling is if you're creating content at the moment and you're getting lots of likes and comments and stuff like that, but it's not leading to sales. And you're also the type of person who doesn't like to be super pushy with your selling. So you like creating that real magnetic pull in your communication because the goal of it is that at the end of any presentation that you give or video, you know, YouTube video, whatever it is, that they would go, oh my gosh, I just need what that person has. Like I need the system, right? So that's what infusion selling does. And so infusion selling is nine strategies. Let me give you another one. So another one that we use with infusion selling is what, what I call micro decisions. And micro decisions is a methodology where throughout a video, throughout a webinar, throughout a challenge, you're actually setting up really strategic decision points throughout your presentation so that you don't just wait till the end. What most people do is they just present a whole bunch of content, right? Like open up the fire hose. It's like, let me give you everything, every step I've got, every like, and the people the audience like, this is awesome. Like, and they're also like, and I'm completely overwhelmed and I don't know what to do first, right? And so they're completely overwhelmed. And then you get to the end and you're like, and if you like this, buy it, you know, like you can buy my stuff. And so what happens is you don't teach the audience to actually build their decision-making muscle because at the core of it, a presentation or a video that sells is a video that moves an audience to make a decision. That, that's it. Like that is literally what I teach is like helping people to move their audience to make a decision, right? And micro decisions are where you strategically ask the audience to make decisions to commit to themselves, to commit to their content throughout or commit to themselves and commit to the content that you're talking about throughout the presentation. So you might have five or six small decisions that you're asking the audience to make. They could be writing comments and so forth throughout the presentation so that when you reveal your offer, when you actually move into your pitch, because you will have to share an offer at some point, right? If you want to have a business, um, when you move into your pitch, it's just the next decision. And they've already been, it's kind of like, they've already been working out at the gym and they're, they're used to lifting the weights. And then they're like, okay, I've made lots of decisions around this already. Am I ready for the big decision, which is joining your program? And that's when truly, that's when you can really help them. It's like, you know, with Sean, like, like the, this content is really valuable. But but if, if you want to really learn YouTube, like really learn it and really see results, you got to join his course. Like, like that is, that's where like the full breadth of the transformation is, right? And I know for me, it's kind of like this. An example is um, I'm Australian. You can hear, you can hear my Australian accent. For three years, I tried to move to the US, right? So what that means is like, I'm on YouTube. I'm saying, how, do, how does Australians move to the US? I'm talking to people. I'm taking them out for coffee. I'm picking their brains. I am, by the end of it, I'm more confused on how to move to America than I was at the start. Right, because I'm, I'm my kids call it kerfuffling around. I'm like kerfuffling around. I'm not making any decisions. And so what happened was, is eventually I got to the point. I said, "Am I really going to do this?" And I said, "Yes." And we hired an international lawyer, an immigration consultant, an international tax accountant, and literally within six months, my feet hit American soil, and we've been here for just over four years. And so what's crazy was I kerfuffled around for three years because I wasn't making any decisions, and then within six months. I'd set up everything. We moved our family with two little kids and our whole life had changed. And that's the power of making a decision. And for me, it was putting money down. It was making a commitment. And so the transformation will actually, or the transaction of them joining your program, is actually, and which is a decision, is actually part of their transformation that they will see and create results. Super strong. And so if you want to learn more micro decisions, signature story, and, and even see the details on uh, on the other ones inside of the infusion selling system, think infusion selling.com. If you're specifically, if you already have an offer, if you have a course, mm. if you have clients or services already built, then this would be a really no brainer for you. I'm, I'm pumped to see that Colin put together something super affordable and you can immediately apply these things and they'll start working 
uh, in the environment that you already have. If you haven't created those things yet, uh, definitely check it out as well, because this kind of thinking is the kind of information I wish I had when I was first getting into this. It actually makes me think of someone in our community right now who actually, they wanted to build out their information in a course and they finished it. They put it inside uh, they, their expertise is in photography. They have a kind of a unique way of doing it. That's a fast workflow, getting everything done. And they package all their stuff together, uploaded it to Thinkific, got it going, uploaded a logo, got the price out there, even shared it on a decent, not huge, but not small social media following and crickets. I was just talking to this individual, zero sales. And this kind of can happen a lot. You have an offer, but it's not quite enough. You got to make those connections. Mm. And so learning how to weave some of these things in and, and talking to this individual, this, this, it would be perfect for that. So if you have an ebook or like a course or something, um, this is a skill set that is kind of under taught. And so I'm super glad that Colin is sharing this with us today. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more that is in, um, show notes again, as we said, uh, wherever you're listening or watching or think And you can see all the details and a really cool, mm-hmm. uh, super affordable to offer that I think you'll love. But Colin, I want to ask you specifically now uh, on your expertise. I saw a video on your YouTube channel, how to be more confident when speaking, but you called it sexy confidence. <laughs> um, I'm curious you know, if we want to tap into maybe just not only getting calming our nerves, maybe that's the starting point, but tapping into our sweet spot, our sweetness, mm-hmm. like there's always something powerful when a someone's kind of like one on one, they overcome the initial nerves and you're like, yeah, they presented the information effectively. And then there's somebody who comes together, comes across and they don't need to be like somebody else. They just kind of have that magic. And that's one of the things you help people develop. What are just some practical things as we land the plane today on, uh, on just kind of being more confident when speaking on video. Mm. I love video and I've been speaking on video for many years. Uh, obviously, I don't I don't teach it like you. Um, but for me, video is just beautiful. And and whenever I'm looking at a camera, uh, especially when I'm, you know, recording a video and so forth, the camera for me is like looking into the eyes of a person. And so I visually think about imagine I'm doing this presentation and I'm talking to one person. It's actually not even a huge audience. It's like I'm talking to one person and right now I'm looking at the camera like directly down the middle of the lens and I'm talking to that one person. And you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the difficulties that you're going through. I'm thinking about the challenges that you're facing. I'm thinking about happening to, you know, get enough money to go to the next level in your business or hiring your first staff member. I'm thinking about the difficulties of that that you're facing. And when I'm speaking, even if I'm not men- mentioning those things, I'm thinking about who you are as a person. And so I look at the camera and it's not a, it's not a camera because whenever I look at a camera, it can feel like uh, like technical, right? It's a piece of technical equipment. No, when you look at a camera, that's a human being. And the more you can experience that and feel that and think about your perfect customer, imagine you're talking, having an intimate conversation with them when you're on camera with them, it will change the game about how you show up on camera. And so for me, it's more about, you know, I'm not great with all the technical side of things, but the stage presence is is like, you really need to see it as you're talking to a person. And if you watch the greatest YouTubers, the greatest video presenters, that's what they do. Like it's it's like as if they're talking to you, right? And they they change their how they how how they're moving and so forth, and they're talking to the the camera in a way that it's, you're a human being. Uh, that's that's what they, that's that's the first frame. From from a practical perspective, for me, it all a lot of it a lot of it comes down to your thinking and what you do with your physiology. And so when I say your thinking is, if you're coming into doing a, a video or something like that or a presentation. And you're telling yourself things like, uh, they're going to hate this. They're going to, I don't know, or asking questions like, will they even like my content? Or what will they think of me? Like you're asking yourself really poor quality questions or having a poor quality conversation with yourself. Your psychology will instantly affect how you feel and essentially how you show up. And so for me, I'm, 
I am ruthless with my thinking coming into a webinar or a presentation or a video series or something like that. And so I'm really conscious. I even physically write down what I believe about myself. I'll say I'm, I am a transformational coach. I'm a world-class trainer and speaker. I'm a leader of market leaders. I like write this stuff down and I get clear on what I believe about myself coming into my presentations. And so that's like psychologically. And one last tip is physiologically, what's really cool is, is literally to like hold your shoulders up. Like even right now, if you're watching this video, sit up, hold your shoulders up, put a smile on your face just because it feels good, right? Um, stand up straight, take a deep breath in and notice the air going through your nostrils. Do it right now. Just take a deep breath and notice the air going through your nostrils. Wiggle your toes and feel, feel how your toes feel in your shoes, right? Take a deep breath in, feel your nostrils. The goal is to be physiologically strong, but mentally present. So not mentally thinking about every single thing you're going to say is to be actually mentally present. And so you should have rehearsed what you're going to say beforehand. And when you get on, on screen, you might have a prompter or things like that. Personally, I don't love prompters. I'll have like bullet points that I might want to hit and that's it. Um, but it's like, you want to be present because remember, you're, you're, not, you're not doing a reading. A reading is what you do for kids. You're talking to adults. They want to hear you. They want to experience you. They want to have a conversation with you. And so when you do these things, you're going to feel better. You're going to show up as the bigger version of yourself and you're going to connect with your audience like never before. Man, I was right there with you. My posture <laughs> just corrected. My toes are wiggling. I started breathing on the backstage here in StreamYard. Um, and uh, man, I love some of those practical and powerful tips. Uh, friends, uh, I, I want to encourage you. Um, Colin's a great dude in general, not only just world-class businessman, but it's been cool to get to know him. And as you know, we only really like to connect and collaborate with people who we not only know they're world-class in their content, in uh, their training, in their uh, coaching materials, but also in things like family and values. And so Colin, I'm really grateful you're on here. And of course, we'll link up your stuff, the special offer at uh, thinkinfusionselling.com. And, and you can check out the show notes if you're listening to this. But Colin, give people uh, a way to follow you. What social accounts are you most active on? And uh, anything you want the Think Media Podcast community to know about? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Instagram, that's kind of like where I am most active at the moment. So you can just follow me at Colin Boyd, just with one L, Colin Boyd. Uh, also I do have a podcast, which is called the expert edge. So if you search the expert edge, uh, just on iTunes or any podcast that you're listening to, uh, and my website's colinboyd.co, uh, dot co, not dot com because there's a country singer on dot com. And so if you like country songs, go to dot com. If you want to learn how to speak more effectively and sell your stuff without being pushy, go to dot co. <laughs> Colin Boyd. Thank you. So good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Sean. Well, I hope you're ready to start using your signature story in your content. I love how Colin walked through those three ingredients and how to even get comfortable on camera sharing that story. It's so important that as you start creating content, as you start putting yourself out there online and growing your personal brand, that you are giving people the opportunity to connect with who you really are. I think this is so important and I really believe it's part of the reason why you are here listening to this content because you've heard maybe a piece of our story or maybe you're ready to go deeper with understanding why we think YouTube is important. Maybe you've connected with our values or the fact that I'm a mom of three who homeschools or the fact that Sean's wife almost died and he was able to step up as a leader and provide for his family. There may be something inside of these signature stories that resonates with you. And that's why you are here. Now, if you've never heard any of those stories, I'll make sure to link up down below some of the talks where Sean and I have shared a little bit more of the intimate side of who we are with you here on the podcast. And if you want to call in to help coach you through your signature story, you can go over to thinkinfusionselling.com where he's sharing the nine strategies that you need to be attracting the right clients to your offers. Again, this is if you are more advanced, right? If you've already got something that you're selling or you know you're going to be selling to a target audience, this can be right for you. So you can go over to thinkinfusionselling.com to get started today. Now here on the podcast, we love those who are rating and reviewing our show. It means the world to me to be able to get to read what you are saying about the show, how it's impacting your life and the takeaways that you're getting 
every single week. So thank you for those who are rating and reviewing the podcast. This helps other content creators and entrepreneurs just like you see that this could be a podcast that they should be investing their time in. Because I know your time is valuable and it means the world to me that you would give us this hour, this half hour, this 20 minutes, depending on the episode length, every single week. So thank you so much for that. Today comes from Deed Delightful One. Uh, they said, think podcast is necessary listening. I tend to agree. If you want the most relevant and practical information of how to succeed on YouTube, the Think Podcast is the place to come. It's not boring, impractical, cookie cutter information regurgitated for you to consume. The information here is relatable, digestible, and strategy-based information that can help you to create a business on YouTube. I love that there is humor, real stories, and laser-focused methodology to help you not only get started, but dominate on the platform. Oh my goodness, that is probably one of the most impactful reviews that I have read. And I am so grateful that I got to bring that to you here on the show, because I hope that is exactly what everyone is getting. The fact that this is not boring, impractical, but that we're sharing real life stories of what it's like to be a content creator, bringing awesome guests like Colin to the podcast and helping you get over your comfort zone so that you can press record. Thank you so much for leaving such a thoughtful review. It means so much to me. Well, I wanna thank you for being a part of what we're doing. Subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast and join us on this journey of growing your YouTube channel with Think Media. Thanks for watching or listening and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.